This is your Lead Life Vodcast for the week of September 12th. I'm Randy Schwimmer. Welcome back. For over a decade, the tide of capital has flowed mostly in one direction, into markets. That's because since the Great Recession, the Fed has kept interest rates low. Public credit, both loans and bonds, benefited from this support. Private credit has also enjoyed a one-way stream. With interest rates low, investors sought higher yields and low risk. Private equity sponsors obliged by working closely with their relationship direct lenders to put their own LP money to work, resulting in a full pipeline of buyout financings. However, structures and pricing became increasingly issuer friendly as arrangers competed to lead deals. These erosions were rationalized because elevated purchase price multiples provided greater cash equity cushions. COVID threatened to upend this momentum, but the Fed's loose money intervention kept it going. That liquidity with continued supply chain challenges created unusual upward pressures on inflation, resulting in headline CPI levels not seen in decades. August's worse than expected 8.3% CPI number may force the Fed into more hawkish action. Investors are translating this to greater recession and default risk. Loan funds have jettisoned $20 billion since May and $12 billion departed bond funds in the past three weeks. Quantitative tightening is draining liquidity from the banking system. Bank reserves are projected to be drawn down from $3 trillion to $2 trillion. Some bankers are being told to limit their corporate and wholesale lending. We've reported for years how the BSL market is being disintermediated by the largest direct lenders. But as SOFR soars from near zero a year ago to 4% by year end, those lenders are seeing shrinking interest coverage ratios. Some seasoned credit investors are on the sidelines waiting for more direction from markets and the economy. Our appraisal, however, suggests there may be more to cheer about, particularly in private credit. Over the next several weeks, we'll examine why capital scarcity is ultimately beneficial for illiquid loans. We'll also discuss other similar issues such as capital velocity, hold levels, and default risk. Reporting from the land of plenty at the lead left, this is Randy Schwimmer, wishing you and your families a safe and healthy week.